I will take all of your guesses until the most football guy in the room decides he wants to step up and be a man and hmm. get the answer right. Uh, so you guys, the floor is yours uh, to pepper me with the Cowboys that you okay. think. I'd like to go first. Okay. And who it should be. It should be a breakout season for one Tony Pollard. It absolutely should be Gavin Dawson. Boom, I like it. where your head is nailed at. It. You nailed it uh, in a way that doesn't actually have you nailing it, unfortunately. That uh -huh. is not the guy that Nate Tice has as the breakout cowboy. So wing and a miss. Gavin Dawson. I'm used to it. Broadus, you're closing your eyes over there. You're pulling out your crystal ball. I got an assumption that you're probably texting your gang a seven right now. Mm -hmm. Tony Pollard is the guy with the most ability. He, oh, for he, sure. He's the yeah. guy that can do this. But will they unleash the beast that is Tony Pollard? That's no. the big question. We've been talking about it for too long now. Now, And they have been loud about it. They've been wrong about Tony Pollard this whole, time, uh, this whole time about how many touches they should give him. But now they're being loud about the fact that they're going to be giving him all these touches. And there's Clarence Hill and the Dallas Morning News. And everybody's talking about Tony Pollard. More touches. Playing wide receiver. Catching passes. Taking handoffs. Tony Pollard. They're being very loud about it. And if they are wrong about this, it's one thing to be wrong. It's it's another to be loud and wrong. And it's going to just be a big time bleep you to the fans if Tony Pollard... If the offense is sputtering and Tony Pollard's not getting mm -hmm. the deserved touches that we feel like he deserves, then everybody's going to be really upset. The way it would happen is, number one, injuries can always open things up for you. Number two, the passing game could be so pathetic they'll be forced to get him the ball. That could help. Or maybe the organization sees it as, you know, Zeke's not going to be here for much longer. We don't really need to invest in his stardom anymore. You know, we, we could move on from it. And it's Tony Pollard's last year. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible that I, I, I think his entire career, though, is most likely going to be played out with unrealized potential. No, there's no question about that. I mean, that, that, that to me, that's, you know, you watch him use Tony Pollard and stuff in the OTAs and the mini camps and stuff, and you're thinking, oh, is this just to make everybody happy, you know, and then all of a sudden you get during the season and then you don't see any of that materialize. So oh, it, it's just lip service. Yeah. It's it, so no, no, that's, that's the bad way. I, okay. Let me ask you this. Does, there's two different ways I'm going to go here, but do they, would you consider because I mean, the, the guy had, I mean, is a breakout. So the guy had 11 interceptions. Are they saying something about digs? They're not saying anything about digs. I got some good stuff on digs for you though, here in just a minute. Uh, but digs is not the breakout candidate. Let me I guess Osa. Oh, okay. Well, ding, ding, ding. Game's over. Sorry, Let's go. Oh, okay. You just got oh. taken to the woodshed. No, I was, I was thinking like, I mean, if they were talking about breakouts, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was, I was kind of thinking, well, they think that even that Diggs is going to be even better than he was last year. I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking about. And I was also thinking about Michael Gallup. Breakout from all pro? It would be it would be, be a hell of a breakout. I'm that, going MVP. You no, know, that's that's a good point. That that's that's yeah, ridiculous on my part. Yeah. It's all right, man. It's all right. We got uh, we got new football. Because I was thinking, uh, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking that they were maybe that that because he, he had some rough patches last year, and I know he was all pro, but Ooh. I think he was all pro because of the the turnovers. I like that. That would be a nuanced take, but breaking out into being a legit cover guy. Yeah, along I mean, with that's, the takeaways. That's what I mean. I, I, I can understand being I can understand being an all pro because of turnovers. But I could also there you know teams had success throwing the ball against him. Maybe yeah. how about a breakout of becoming a complete corner? <laughs> that's what I was kind of thinking of. It's a good spin. Okay, that's really good, good recovery. A really good recovery. It's been job tap dancer. Us. We are we are going to uh, we are going to get to digs here in just a second. Okay. okay. Now Osa for the Gavin Dawson gets the award football guy of the day. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Once uh, again. And and since we have an off day tomorrow, you're going to be back to back uh football guy of the day here in the G-Bag wow. Nation. So what an honor for you. Uh but they here's what they say about Osa. Uh it says, "Okay, so fellow rookie teammate Micah Parsons deservingly gets all the headlines, but Osa contributed to a surprisingly strong Cowboys defense and pass rush as a rookie, though he finished with only two sacks last year." Uh, his pressure rate on his pass rushing snaps was just behind players such as Cameron Jordan, 
It's a really good pass rusher in the NFL, uh, Draymond Jones and uh, Jeffrey Simmons as well. So though Osa doesn't have ideal size, they say, he is uh, disruptive on the rundowns. He logged four non-sack TFLs last season, which tied for 28th among defensive linemen. So his disruption will be needed, of course, if an aggressive Cowboys defense that thrives on big plays hopes to become, uh, you know, ho- hopes to come close to its 2021 production. He's so, just a giant athlete, you know. He's so big and thick, and you know the way he moves has tremendous balance. I think there's enough explosive speed in there. I think he he is, you know, the one guy that I look at with those defensive tackles as having the potential of being more than just a guy. Yeah, and uh, John Owning had this a while back, and uh, I wanted to bring it up. John Owning, formerly of the Dallas Morning News, and he is now with Pro Football Focus. But he he tweeted out back uh, back a few weeks ago. He's like, I expect Osa will have a big year too after a pretty impressive rookie year, where he finished second in total pressures and stops among rookie interior defensive linemen. Wow. So I mean, you know about the quickness. He's mobile. He's powerful enough, at least with his hands, and he's kind of one of these Demarcus Lawrence like effort guys, where like he he plays hard as hell, and when you do that defensively, you fall into making plays. Yeah, and so uh, you're getting it from a local level, the respect for Osa, but now nationally, people are looking at him like, okay, he could be a breakout. I think that's the perfect dude because he flashed quite a bit. And then now it's like, okay, that second year, can you really take it up a notch when you think he's probably going to have a ton of opportunities? Because it's not like there's a bunch of guys in the interior of the defensive line of the Cowboys that you feel like you have to get snaps. Like Osa, Neville, Vanilla Gorilla, and then it's like, take it, whoever wants it. It would be huge because right now I don't think the defensive uh, pressure is going to be as good as it was last year. But you get a breakout year from Osa, maybe it could become closer to an el- a legitimate uh, elite front. But... um you know, right now, I think they have Tank as one point of pressure and Micah if he's coming on a blitz, but you're looking for that third one that's consistently going to be there, and I don't think it's going to materialize unless well, it's Gallimore. You know, if they felt like that that Osa was going to be such a breakout candidate, I wonder why they moved I wonder why they moved Chauncey Golston a three technique. Yeah, yeah, I did I did have that thought as well. You know, I mean, that that's the thing. I mean, if you, you know, when when you said Osa and, and we all got excited about it and I started thinking, well, hell, they moved a defensive end to, that's to a real good three point. technique. Yeah. Why? I mean, do they really feel like that because think about the three techniques you got. You got Neville Gallimore, you've got Tristan Hill, you know, you've got Osa. Now they've moved a guy Golston. I mean, is I want I'm interested in see if Osa even starts. How how many are you keeping? How many can you realistically keep? Can can you keep four of those guys? They go, or? they go. They usually keep ten defensive linemen. They usually keep four inside and three, or excuse me, six on the on the edge. Okay, so you're really only keeping probably at best three. I mean, of those Tristan three Hill. Techniques. Tristan Hill could be gone. Right. Tristan that, Hill's a fringe guy yeah. that could be cut easily. Sure, sure he could. But but you know, we we've talked about you know the thirty third team brought about Carlos Watkins. You know, Carlos Watkins could play one and three. I mean, he's more of a one. But I just, you know, it's funny. I, I, I don't disagree with him potentially breaking out, but I wonder why they went ahead and moved a guy over to three technique that's going to compete with him. Fair question. 100% fair question. Uh, okay, so Nate Tice, athletic breakout players around the NFL here, and then we'll get to Trayvon Diggs. But somebody stuff. that I want to bring up is Osa Odening. Ooh. Odigi Zua. <laughs> yes! Great I had to look word. down on his note card for the phonetic. Gosh, that is so good. Dalton Miller, ladies and gentlemen, Pro Football Network, friend of the station, and we used to have him on the nosebleed seats all the time. And it was always Wine Wednesdays and, you yeah. know, THC Tuesdays, you know, for Dalton Miller. And so can we hear that one more time? This is professional draft insider football guy, Dalton Miller, <laughs> trying to belch out the name Osa Odigi. Diggy Zua. But somebody that I want to bring up is Osa Odin Ning Odigi Zua. <laughs> I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. It takes a while. Yeah. You get yeah. a couple of reps in, then it'll roll. No, you gotta, it, then it's got to roll. Yeah. I love how no. he slowed that down for you himself. You have to slow man. it down. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me hit this Odigi Zua speed bump real quick, and then we'll get back and going.